This video is going to get real controversial. I feel a little bit queasy talking about this stuff on camera. This got intense very quickly. <laughs> Hi guys, so today I'm going to be doing the controversial parenting tag. Today I'll be collaborating with another mother and her name is Kay Foss and her YouTube channel is The Foss. So if you haven't already, go over to her channel and subscribe. She has the cutest family. She has two little girls, Aspen and Indy, and her vlogging and videos are fantastic. I love watching all her videos of just their daily life and she's really funny as well and very positive and cheerful so she really brightens up your day when you watch those videos so go over to her channel and check out her video on the controversial parenting tag so we decided that we would collaborate and do the controversial parenting tag um, it's interesting watching all these different youtubers do the controversial parenting tag and seeing everyone's different opinions I just wanted to start off by saying that everyone has their own opinions and my opinions don't have to be the same as the next person so if you don't agree with some things that I say um, that's okay um, I'd love it if you could answer some of these questions in the comments down below tell me your opinions and your views on these different topics I am a little bit worried doing this tag because it's portraying a lot of views that are controversial and can get people mad or upset so hopefully I don't get anyone upset I am all for everyone having their own opinions um, these are just my opinions and what I believe in okay so the first topic is pro-life versus pro-choice this is probably the most controversial topic out of all of them I don't know why they put it first um, I am pro-choice I have to be very careful with my words because I don't want to say the wrong thing. It is a woman's choice to progress with her pregnancy, to adopt her baby out after she's had the baby, or if she chooses to terminate the pregnancy. It's obviously very sad if she does have to do that, but there are circumstances which I believe that a woman has the right to abort her baby. This got intense very quickly. <laughs> I feel a little bit queasy talking about this stuff on camera. The second topic is baby wearing. I am so pro baby wearing. It is a lifesaver when you have a newborn. Um, I have a five month old and I'm still baby wearing. In the beginning um, as a newborn I would use a ring sling wrap with my baby because he was so small and now I use a normal carrier um, and he loves it. He loves being facing inwards when he's tired or facing outwards when he wants to look around and he loves looking at the trees. So I am very pro baby wearing. I don't know why that's a controversial topic. The next topic is circumcision. Okay, um, I don't know how much in depth I'm going to go with this topic because it is a very private topic. In saying my views on circumcision, we'll be telling you guys what has or has not happened to Jacob. And when he's older and he's looking back at these videos or his friends see these videos, I don't want them really to know about his private parts. So I think that I'll just say that everyone has the right to their own opinions. Um, everyone has a right to do whatever they feel is best for their baby um, regarding circumcision but I will not be telling you what we did or didn't do with Jacob. So the next topic is adoption. I don't know how to approach this topic. Um, I don't know whether it's about me adopting or you know giving your baby up for adoption. I believe that giving your baby up for adoption is the most selfless act that someone could do. I could not do it. I admire people that realize that they can't raise a baby so that they give up their baby for adoption. It's so selfless and admirable and I couldn't do it so so those people are very strong. And regarding me, um, I would love to adopt. I would love to adopt a child. Um, it is very expensive though so who knows if I will or not but I am so pro-adoption. It's an amazing thing. It's the most amazing thing for people that can't have a baby of their own. Um, I believe it's wonderful that you can uh, adopt a baby and raise them as your own. Uh, baby piercing. So as a child, my mom pierced my ears as a baby. 
um, and I never really thought anything of it until I saw a video of someone piercing their four month old baby's ears. I cried when I watched that video. The poor baby was unexpectedly given so much pain and I just, I couldn't watch the whole thing. I started crying. Um, she was so happy and then they pierced in her ears and she was so sad and was just for no real reason other than to look good. So I believe that if I were to have a girl, um, I would wait until she's a little bit older and understands better um, to then get her ears pierced because it was just so sad. I can barely deal with Jacob having his vaccinations, so yeah, I couldn't deal with putting him through that pain. But again, each to their own, if you want to do it to be your kid, if you can stand going through that, um, good on you. <laughs> okay, the next topic is breast milk versus formula. Both good, both amazing in their own way. Um, um, obviously, if you've watched my other videos, you know that I did breastfeed for four and a half months. Um, it's the most amazing thing ever um, to feed your baby from your own body. It's cheap, you don't have to pay anything, um, and it's readily available. I also believe that formula is amazing too. There are certain circumstances where mothers can't breastfeed, and I think formula is amazing for that reason. I do believe that when you have a baby, you should try everything you can to breastfeed, but obviously some circumstances mean that you can't breastfeed. I certainly went through a lot of challenges with breastfeeding at the beginning and almost went to formula. Um, I think you should give it a good go and then resort to formula. Um, fed is best, so um, obviously I am pro both breastfeeding and formula because I am now formula feeding my five month old baby. Spanking. I really don't like that word spanking. I think that's an American um, word. To be honest, I've gone back and forth on this topic. I've um, spoken a lot to Jordan about this topic and um, I honestly don't know what I'm going to do. I don't think I will spank. I, I don't believe that it's necessary. Um, I think there's so many other ways that you can discipline your child um, that will work. Obviously, I don't know what I will do just yet. I think that maybe I would resort to it if, you know, my baby's doing something dangerous that I don't want them to do ever again. Co-sleeping. Again, I don't really want to offend anyone or anything like that. I'm going to be careful with my words. When Jacob was a newborn baby, I did co-sleep maybe seven to ten times, um, I just got to the point where he was not sleeping very well um, and it was just better for us to have him in the bed and I could just breastfeed him while we were lying down. In saying that, before I had Jacob I said I would never co-sleep, I don't think I could ever do it, um, I thought I would roll onto him and it's very dangerous. I realise now that it's not dangerous um, as long as you take you know, the safety precautions and everything like that. In saying that, I stopped co-sleeping um, because I didn't really want him to get used to sleeping in my bed. In saying that, co-sleeping actually means um, having your baby sleep in the same room as you. I think it's bed sharing that's where you sleep in the same bed. Um, so. Yes, we did co sleep, sleep in the same room for four months, and then we transferred him into his own room. I think it was just easier because we were breastfeeding that we had him in our room at night time, but Jordan wakes up early in the morning, it was just easier to have him in his own room at four months because he just kept waking up and wanting to stay up for the day when he saw Jordan getting ready for work. So um, he's been sleeping a lot better since being in his own room. Okay, this next topic says home versus public versus private schooling. I don't think I could do homeschooling. I think uh, I don't have the patience for teaching. I have family members that are teachers and I just hear really bad stories and you know, you have to have the right amount of patience for teaching. 
Um, teaching my own kid might be different, but then again, I don't think I'll ever do it. I do think that I'll be sending Jacob to a public school. Um, I think public versus private. I just believe that private schools are a little bit too um, obsessed with their image than actually producing, you know, good human beings. Um, that's not to say I won't send Jacob to a private school, probably, you know, decide that down the track. But I think public is just as good and, and yeah, I think that's where we'll send Jacob. Vaccinations. I am pro-vaccinations. This is a very controversial subject. I think that vaccinations are what's best for babies slash children. I mean, look at smallpox. Smallpox is now eradicated due to vaccines. Um, and that was killing a lot of people back in the day. It's really awkward to talk about this because I know a lot of people are anti-vax. <sighs> I don't believe that vaccinations can cause autism. Um, we have autism in our family um, and I've been around it all my life, worked in disability, so I've kind of made up my decision based on my experience. I don't think vaccinations um, cause autism. There's no real proof what causes autism. There are some theories out there. I did hear a story of a little girl who had a disorder of some kind. I think it was from her immune system or something like that. I can't remember what it was, but she started school and a week later, her parents were notified that um, someone in the class wasn't vaccinated. And this is a real risk for her disorder. So she had to end up leaving that school because that one person had not had their vaccinations. She's just started the school, made friends, and had to leave because it's too risky for her to be around people that haven't had their vaccinations. I just think that's ridiculous for that little girl but you know each to their own opinions i guess the next topic is medicating children um i don't know what this means i don't know if it means giving medicine to children or um like medicating children for like behavioral disorders i, I believe medicine is good for children in certain circumstances i don't believe in using it every single week or every single day um, just for little things. I think it needs to be used at appropriate times um, when your baby is sick or hurt or something like that. I've used Nurofen for Jacob a couple times since he's been born um, with high fevers um, and sicknesses like that. So I'm not against it. I'm completely for it. Um, in regards to medicating children with behavioral disorders, uh, speaking from ex my experience working with children with behavioural disorders, I believe it's necessary sometimes. A few times I looked after children that were not medicated and their parents were at their wit's end. They were not happy, they were not healthy. I've seen the benefits of medicine for behavioural disorders. I think I've seen you know, happier parents, happier children. In saying that, I don't believe it should just be like willy-nilly give medication to all of them. I think it should be given at the right times and the right amounts. I know some people believe that it's wrong to medicate them as it makes them really slow and, you know, really um, not themselves. But if it means that they're going to be healthier, as in not self-harm themselves, not running out onto the road, not doing dangerous things, I think that is better. Um, I've seen all those things happen and it's not good. So yeah, I believe that they medication should be used at certain and appropriate times. Cloth versus disposable nappies. I wish I could have done cloth nappies. Um, it's something that I actually considered doing recently, like switching him to cloth nappies. I don't want to make excuses, but I don't think I have the time or the energy to do that. I admire people that do that. It's so good for the environment. I mean, disposable nappies are really bad for the environment. They are just so convenient. Maybe I'll look to doing that in a couple months when Jacob's, you know, a little bit more independent. The cry it out method. 
Oh, this is hard. Um, I guess it's good for some people, not good for others. I mean, it's dependent on the child. We did try to do the cry it out method just a tiny bit. Like I would never make him cry for more longer than about three to five minutes. Um, I know that the actual method means that you have to do it for like 10 minutes at a time and stuff like that. I just don't like, you know, him crying to sleep. I think, I, I feel like he should be calm and relaxed before going to sleep. I think it's really cruel to be, you know, upset before you go to sleep. I think about the times when I've cried to sleep and I don't feel very good. In saying that, I think it's necessary in some cases. Um, if they're not sleeping well, um, they're not self-settling, I think it's, you know, good. It didn't work for us. Um, I used it for maybe a couple days and I didn't think it worked for us. So that's pretty much it for the controversial parenting tag. I hope I haven't offended anyone. I really just hope that you've taken from this video that everyone has a different opinion and that includes mine. Um, it doesn't have to be the same as yours. I'd love it if anyone watching this could comment down below, you know, maybe their different views on some of the topics. Um, I'd love to hear everyone's stories, what's worked for them. Um, parenting is a hard thing and I think we've all got different ways to do it, different views on everything. If you haven't already, press that subscribe button down below. I would love my channel to grow. Um, so that I can produce more videos for you guys. And don't forget to go check out Kay Foss's channel and her video that we're collaborating on.